That's right, a web of fun, interesting characters sporting unique abilities, traversing an interesting world. I am, of course, talking about the sponsor of this video, winner of Best Mobile Game of the Year at the Game Awards, Honkai Star Rail, a sci-fi fantasy RPG that just released their most massive update to date, featuring a vibrant new world called Panacone, 1920s aesthetic think Great Gatsby meets Inception, with anime. And the mysterious crystal ball tarot card wielding wind type character Black Swan has entered the fray with their most recent update, sporting some epic damage over time capabilities. With another new character named Sparkle set to make her debut in the 2.0 update. 2.0 coming with a new world, new characters, gameplay mechanics, such as wall walking, transformative mazes, new NPCs, new enemies, keyword new. Love it when the game keeps it feeling new, feeling fresh. So click the link below, download the game and log in for seven consecutive days to receive 20 special star rail passes that'll help you draw new characters and build your team. And use the code on screen to receive 50 stellar jades. Thank you once again to Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring this video. I appreciate it and congrats on the Game Awards win. And now, to business. So Madam Web is now out. Hopefully you've had the chance to not watch it whatsoever. However, if you did drag a significant other to Madam Web for Valentine's Day or a significant other dragged you to Madam Web for Valentine's Day, let me be the first to welcome you to single life. I'm sure what you had was great while it lasted. That warning is to say, don't drag your date to trash, first and foremost, but also this is my Madam Web spoiler talk video. Gonna talk about some spoiler-ish things I couldn't talk about in my spoiler-free review. Not gonna be a play-by-play -play or a nitpick-by-nitpick. -nitpick. My god, one could make a nitpick video about Madam Web that's twice as long as the runtime of Madam Web. Did Cassandra Webb, who is in the movie Wanted for Kidnapping Three High School Students, book passage on an airliner in a New York airport two years after 9-11? Arguably the most paranoid time in New York travel history, let alone airline history. Yes. How? Don't know, but I guess it happened. Did she end up in, where was it? The Amazon? Columbia? Tropical rainforest? Did she end up out there? Like that. Yes, obviously she does possess the tech that is the transporter from season eight of Game of Thrones that got everyone from point A to point B in two seconds. I want to know the bullshit hand-drawn map that led her to the exact point of her birth in the middle of nowhere. Point is, there's a lot. Then again, in the movie, maybe it does explain how she got there. That would require me to watch the movie again. Maybe I'd pick up on it, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to watch the movie again. Funny thing is you look at the promotional material. Spider ladies, they team up in their suits and Madam Web, we see her Madam Web suit, no. Spider ladies fighting with superpowers in their spider suits. That is one vision of the future that Ezekiel Sims gets when he dies. Madam Web in her suit, very end, voiceover, prologue ending. That's like, think about the release of Terminator 2 back in 1991. Imagine the promotional material leading up to the release heavily revolving around future John Connor. Like he gets his own poster and shit. Might seem a bit hyperbolic, but for comparison's sake, it does hammer home the point of dishonest marketing. That is not honest marketing for the movie Madam Web. My grievances in the film don't revolve around this. It is worth mentioning, it's worth bringing up. Movie's hot garbage with or without dishonest marketing. But it's still stupid. Studios gotta stop that. So sorry to inform the internet, 99.99% of the movie, other than one vision of the future, is not Sydney Sweeney and her spider onesie. Also, I feel like I have to explain, because I called the three girls in the movie, I called them Jane Connors. Jane is the female version of John, in the case of John Doe and Jane Doe, so John Connor. They're Jane Connors. I thought it was clever at the time. Also, why does Ezekiel say... <laughs> I also see those comments. Y'all are crazy. He is one handsome man, I gotta say, zipping around in his Corvette. That's the main difference right there. I'm more of a Camaro ZL1 guy myself. But why does he deserve death? I get it, he killed Cassandra Webb's mom. He's a bad guy. But why in the future do these three spider superpowered ladies get together and they're like, I think this is the day we break into this guy's loft and drop him off a roof and murder him. What, why not? What do you say? Like, are they heroes or are they assassins? That's a very anti-hero thing to do. Also, how does Ezekiel Sims dress up in his, his spider suit? How does he do it? Does he wear it under his tuxedo? It's pretty bulky looking. Doesn't look like he's wearing anything under the tuxedo. Also, he's walking around barefoot the entire movie. At first, I thought that was kind of smart. Like, oh, that's how he can walk on walls. Then when he's in a spider suit crawling on the ceiling, he's in a onesie that traditionally, as spider suits do, they cover his feet. So I'm like, all right, he went from barefoot to having a onesie, but how did he change it? Is it, is it nanotech like Tony Stark? Never explains, it's just kind of, shut up, don't think about it. So I said in my review, there were scenes where it felt like Dakota Johnson ad-libbed more than a few scenes in here. One of which was when one of the spider ladies steps out in front of her ambulance 
Dakota Johnson's ambulance, well, it's not Dakota Johnson. Cassandra Webb's ambulance almost hits her and then she's like, ugh. And Cassandra Webb was like, who flips off an ambulance? It just felt like that probably came up in the script read where they're all reading it. And I'm sure she was probably like, she flips off the ambulance? Yeah. Who flips off an ambulance? Oh, that's great. Use that. Say that in the movie. I felt like that was more her, the actor, asking the important questions. If it wasn't, let me blissfully believe it was. This movie is chock full of shit dialogue. A lot of the shit dialogue's been zapped from my brain. I, I could feel my brain forgetting about this movie as time went on. That's why I had to pump this out pretty fast. But there's a scene where a bird hits her apartment window, and then the bird's dead. And then, oh, that was a vision of the future. And she just kind of has this look on her face like, I wonder what if, and she opens the window. And the bird flies in. And I was like, great, now you understand that what you're seeing is not fate. You can change it. There's no fate but what we make for ourselves, so to speak. Don't do anything awkward or on the nose. Like, have some shit dialogue like, huh, guess you didn't have to die, audience, so now you know. Minus the audience, so now you know part. Yeah, she says exactly that, and it ruins the scene. Less is more, man. The audience got the point. You didn't have to explain it to them. Speaking of ambulances, there's this one scene where she, she has to get to the girls. She has to save them. So these EMTs park an ambulance, and they run into this house. Obviously, someone's in trouble. And she just jacks the ambulance and takes off with it. She needs to get there and save them. I'm glad. Someone else died, but I'm really glad you saved them. At least one person. Who knows? It could have been a group OD. Maybe a, a household of 40 people just drank Kool-Aid because they're part of a cult. You could have killed 40 people to save three. The math just doesn't add up. I love that she left the three girls in the woods alone. Just in the woods alone. She was like, look, I'm wanted for kidnapping. I gotta go alone. I gotta check on some stuff. Uh, stay here in the woods alone. Because if I get pulled over by a cop and they see me with three girls, you could obviously say, hey, it's not a kidnapping, this is a big mistake. But if I'm seen out there without you, they'll just think you're probably, I don't know, dead? Which you very well might end up if I leave you here in the woods alone. Strength in numbers. You are the numbers. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go that way for reasons. Even then the girls were like, I'm pretty sure I saw a diner that direction, generally speaking. Oh, hey, we found it. Sense of direction on point. I'll give her that. How does she become blind at the end of the movie too? She falls in water. I think I saw her get hit by one of the fireworks that were punching holes through brick fucking walls. Pretty sure she got hit by one of those. Did, did that did that paralyze her and make her blind? But yeah, as I said in my review, her enlightenment, her growth, her sense of maturity, she didn't feel earned. She goes from being kind of a grumpy cat lady who doesn't like people, definitely doesn't like kids, to Bran Stark in Game of Thrones. What? Why? Cause she might've gotten hit by a bottle rocket, but I might be mistaken on that. Cause she dropped into the water and they did CPR on her. And actually it happened to her earlier in the movie too. And that's when she got her. So was it like, hey, you weren't dead long enough when you dropped into the water the first time when Ben Parker brought you back? No, you have to stay a little more dead for a little longer. And then the CPR will, then you'll have powers. You'll reach your next Pokemon tier, your next phase of evolution. Oh, that's another thing. Ben, pa ben the Parkers are in this. The Parkers, the family, Peter Parker's family and his very pregnant mom, pregnant with a baby. It's not named in the movie because they can't use the name Peter Parker. Yes, they're all in the movie because they just need fans to feel like they're watching something familiar in this mess. I guess they don't even have the rights to Aunt May because he's like, I met someone. Oh, what's her name? She's very special. How about that weather? We don't know if we can say the word May. It's contract is very fuzzy. Can they call her May Riley? Cause that's her maiden name. It's not the same as Aunt May Parker. Little known fact in my Ben Riley fandom, that's where Ben Riley gets his name. Ben for Uncle Ben Riley. Aunt May's maiden name, Ben Riley. Scarlet Spider. Cheers to the Scarlet Spider before they changed his character and made him an asshole. 90s Scarlet Spider, Clone Saga Scarlet Spider. I always liked him. Madam Web is kind of a deep cut for Spider fans, including, you know, current Spider-Man fans. She's more of a, I knew her, I first saw her in the uh, 90s animated series, Spider-Man. And as I said, Cassandra Webb's kind of an asshole in this movie. I saw a comment in my comment section was like, Madam Web was always an asshole. I always saw Madam Web as someone who's not good or bad, but someone who will dispassionately prepare you for your destiny as she moves you along the wheel of fate. You don't wanna be herded on your wheel of fate. You wanna feel like your fate is yours. Your fate is 
what you make for yourself. This lady was just a grumpy cat lady who didn't want to help out these kids. Left them in the woods to be attacked by wildlife and criminals because you know, that's thinking ahead. I just think Madame Web lends herself to being an interesting character, an interesting figure in a movie, but not the lead. In the end, it just feels like someone at the studio was like, yeah, man, you see they got fine Marissa Tomei to be Aunt May in the new movies? <laughs> Bless them. Anyhow, how was your weekend? Mine, my wife was watching those Fifty Shades movies. I can't stand it, but she loves them. That Dakota Johnson, though. Stay with me on this. I got an idea about Madame Web. Anything else in the plan? Not, just get a group of attractive women to be in a spider movie that's not a Spider-Man movie. It'll be fine. Speaking of got nothing, I got nothing else. The movie's just... This is what it is. It's full of plot holes, contrivances, trash dialogue, and all around bullshit. However, there is no post credit scene, so if you get dragged to this movie, just bail when the end credits hit, if you last that long. Bail when the opening credits hit, you are a legend. I've already asked you if you've seen Madam Web in my previous video. I doubt this is gonna get as many views as that video, so what to ask? What's your favorite of the bad 2000 to 2009 bad comic book movies? We all got them. We got our guilty pleasures. Wear it on your sleeve and you wear it with pride, my friends. Should probably put this down for this. Whatever it is, whatever you think, comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, click right here to see more.